Hi, this is your girl, T. Clements. We're in week 14 and 15 of um, my writing vlog. And I just want to talk about a few things, maybe make this a little short video. Um, I'm starting to hit a better second draft writing stride to actually rewrite this book. I reread it again. I started editing and as I started write, rewriting it, you know, maybe just adding a few scenes, I realized my scenes weren't connecting as well as I thought they did the first time around because a lot of things have happened. We've got the coronavirus. I'm working from home. I don't go as many places anymore because there's not that many places to go. I mean, yeah, Best Buy has just opened up and I love my technology and I would love to buy, you know, cause I just got an Apple watch, get a new um, uh, screen protector and a new band for my Apple watch, but I don't have the need to just go everywhere. And I think it has something to do with the fact that I am now working from home. It makes a huge difference because when I'm at home, I'm more relaxed compared to being in the office. So I was supposed to lose my job. They gave me um, work from a telecommuting opportunity. I took it and we're at the point, even with the coronavirus, that in my state, we're starting to slowly reopen essential businesses. My job is considered essential, so they're trying to reopen those offices. My office is officially shut down. We're not coming back, so we're going to be part of the telecommuting team. But we're slowly opening our building, and they have to follow the rules. We have to have face masks all the time, keep maintaining six feet distances. So there's stuff we're all adapting to, and this also includes writing because now you know you're working from home and the first thing they tell you there's there's writers out there who actually take strolls um i'm taking the initiative to at least walk around my neighborhood for at least 30 minutes at least three times a week if i can barring it doesn't get colder because we're still in april we're going into may but it's been 50 degree weather um so it's too if, if it's raining or if it's like 50 degrees or 40 degrees i'm not going out there because that's just an asthma attack waiting to happen and i'll end up in the hospital and our hospital's already overwhelmed so you know me helping them is not going outside during 40 degree weather i try to do youtube fitness at home if i can to make sure there's a low impact cardio because i am 256 pounds and i try to do the move your arm it's crunch and stuff and ended up decommissioned for a whole week of working out so that wasn't fun you know i had back pain you know even sleeping i had to sleep a certain way which was very uncomfortable for me as a person who sleeps on their stomach um so I'm learning to take it easy. So back to the whole writing thing. Well, it's a be long, so. Um, with me rewriting a lot of these scenes, um, I'm learning to connect my characters on the plot points, almost like a save the cat almost. Um, with the plot points being updated, it actually makes the characters sound more fluid. You know, they're not from point A to point B and this happened, this happened, and this happened. No, I'm flowing from point A. Oh, hi, how are you doing? Oh, I'm chilling, blah, blah, blah. Hi, point B, what's going on? Oh, no, what happened? Hmm, let's talk about this issue. That's basically what my flow is starting to become. And it's a new experience for me. And because it's a new experience, because I've never written a second draft before, I, I'm i pushing Camp NaNoWriMo and a, and a lot of other stuff to the side. And, it's, and it irks my soul that I have to do it this way because I had a whole year planned. I planned this back in December, but I knew that stuff changes. You can't just, you can't expect things to go the way you want them to go. With me working from home, more overtime opportunities because I'm at home. Need to work out more, you know, at least get myself more active because, you know, sitting sitting in these chairs for like 12 hours a day can make your butt wider than it needs to be. And I already have a Y behind, so need to get out of the house more. Cooking from home. I mean, I'm kind of cheating because I have these frozen meals from like Bertucci's and P.F. Chang's that I got from the supermarket and I'm just frying them in the middle of the day. You know before my shift starts or during my lunch break because it's easier to clean than me actually chopping up you know prep chopping and then have to cook the raw food then check the temperature and then go back try to get back to work but then check and make sure i'm not burning food no i just i just get the frozen not the marie calendar is frozen but those actual bags of frozen meals that you actually require you to use a pan and reheat and refire yeah that sort of thing um so with me add you know i 
would have loved this time of year to do Camp NaNoWriMo, but compared to regular NaNoWriMo, where I feel like it kind of messed me up, I think I need to do what's best for me. And I see a lot of author tubers who are participating in Camp NaNoWriMo, and hats off to them, because I don't know how you can write book after book after book after book and then participate in these 30 day scenarios or what have you um so i'm choosing to bow out of it i'm bowing out i'm, I'm not doing it because i'm already in a stride and with that being said i have to rewrite my planner a little bit um the poseidon book two which i already written will be the next book i write i'm not even, once i do the nanorimo book i'm working on the next book series and then we kind of can go from there because these books are long-standing um, narratives. I'm starting to realize, and I can't do, I can't be like like uh, what what is that name? Nora Roberts who goes, who can just bang out these books. She can bang out four or five books in a year. I I don't have the capacity to do that, and I feel like I'm sh I'm kind of crapping on myself, but. The reality is I work full time as a regular employee. So my job kind of comes first, then comes writing. Now, most people say that's blasphemy. Writing should come first. But the, but the fact of the matter is I still have bills to pay. With the current economy, the way it's going, I'm trying to take get as much money to save as possible. I'm going to pay off my credit card so I don't have a whole bunch of credit card debt in the new year because of the current economic situation. And no, it may, and I, I don't want to get off 100% political, but we don't know um, if it's going to be a Great Depression and all the banks of the world are going to say, hey, we need all our money back now or anything like that. No. So to save me a lot of headache and heartache, I don't want to owe as much money. I'm still on the IMAC fund. I've been taking, you know, cash every week, putting it in a jar. Now, most people would just put it in their bank accounts. They would just, you know, electronically transfer. But I find too much of a temptation to transfer that money. Say, oh, well, I'll make it back later and put it into my checking account. So it's easier just to take the cash and put it in a jar or put the change in a jar like our old elderly parents, grandparents used to do. And with the way the economy is going, it's just easier to do it that way. This way, when I go to the Apple store and I have my custom made thing, um, I can just pay in cash. Here's your money. Give me my product. Bye. See you later. That's the kind of mindset I'm getting to with everything um so for writing wise i'm using the coronavirus and watching the news not the president of course but writing watching you know news reports about the virus because it's helping my world building i really wanted to talk about world building but i kind of went off subject because i've been got my mind on a lot of things lately um with world building i can see the coronavirus creating a new type of world like a new a new world order almost and I can see in a book how a major virus has created this whole new world order where people society is different in my society you know humanity one of the societies not the one I'm currently writing a different one humanity has turned into shifter kind humanity is smaller now and some humans choose to live under the monarchy of the shifters rather than live in their de democratic world because the world had gotten so flawed to the point where democracy was more of a total totalitarianism um if you don't know what those words mean just google them but basically the world instead of being democracy it became more of a rich versus poor situation where all the poor, there's more poor than rich and people you know got sick of that lifestyle so they chose to live under shifter rule because the shifters are actually taking care of people they have a balance i mean it's not the most perfect balance because no form of government is perfect it's not a perfect balance however it's better than living under a democratic state where people just take your money almost and just leave you with nothing and i sound like aunt a a rand uh from it's not like andrew ryan actually from um Bioshock, but that's not the point of the story. The point of the story is society failed and they live in a new society. And I feel like that's what the kind of like what the coronavirus is starting to show that the society we've lived in for 50 plus years, the democratic society has failed, is starting to fail us. And it's the fall of the people as well as the fall of the people in charge. I don't want to get into a big political debate, but the whole point is. The YouTube videos are help. I mean, not the YouTube, the news about the coronavirus is helping me see the world differently and it's helping me with this world building. Because of the coronavirus, I can see the reality or the, um, 
the probability of how a world could be in the future. Because my stories take place in the future. It doesn't take place in like the 1800s. I don't want to go down that route, especially as a person of color. Um, I didn't, I never wanted to write a story take place in the 1800s, the early 1910s, the early 1920s. I never wanted to write something like that. I don't want to write Victorian England or the Vikings. You know, there's, there are plenty of other writers who do that. But in the basis of the coronavirus, the scenarios are very realistic. I mean, even when I was playing Resident Evil 3, which is on my Twitch page, by the way, if you guys don't know, it's on my, I have a, a Twitch page, um, which is twitch.tv forward slash at LC underscore Clements, where I, you know, least stream for two hours on the weekends. Right now I'm doing Alien Isolation. Um, I was doing Resident Evil 3, then I did Resident Evil 2 before that. So those scenarios like Resident Evil 3 kind of creeped me out because the whole scene in the hospital where they talk about the rain the vi the T virus how people were coming in how they were coming out people were experimenting on they were in special division that was taking care of these people who were infected I'm like oh god this reminds me of corona so bad because I could see a special task force dedicated to only the coronavirus where people had other illnesses they just be taken care of by regular people how the hospital fall apart because nobody knew that this virus is so contagious and more people got infected like, I can see these scenarios now that the coronavirus, not the, the, the go come back to life zombie apocalypse thing, but the whole rate of the infection. We've seen the rate of infections. You see how pe paranoid people are now. And it's really a shame, but geez, I get, that, that part of the game really did creep me out. Even if I'm replaying it, that that's thing's still going to creep me out. But yeah, like... My my second draft is a real priority. The more I'm writing this real draft, the more world building I'm doing. I'm not doing the corona thing, but I am making me aware of different parts of society of why people act the way they act and why people say what they say. Right now we're in a we're in a situation where people are kind of pointing fingers and coming together. Now I, I can understand a lot of the people's frustration. I think it's really, really a bunch of BS. I have to wait a month to get my products from Amazon thanks to the virus. But people who have need ventilators and medicine take priority over me. And yes, it's frustrating, but I've learned to deal with it because you know what? I don't want people to die because I'm trying to get my packages. That's that's my mindset. And I feel like I'm getting off topic with the writing thing, but it is what it is. Um I've had some ideas down down the line of what I'm gonna do writing wise besides the second draft. I want to go back into graphic noveling and I'm still on the fence about it because of the way my budget is. I'm trying to budget and save. I do want to get a, I'm getting an iMac, I want to get a digital tablet, you know, just for digital drawing. But some people say, hey, won't you get an iPad and do that? I'm like, I, I can't afford a $700 iPad, that's first of all. Second of all, you know, because I'm saving money, second of all, what I might not have time to do that with me working and working on my drafts. I don't know if I'll have time to write a graphic novel and post it on my website because I want to kind of do that. That's a new avenue and I have so many ideas and I'm learning to condense my ideas. Ideas. I want to embroider. I want to do, you know, embroidered, um, hand embroidered cloth. I want to sell on Etsy. I can't do that right now because the coronavirus, I don't, the supplies I need are on hold. So I'm learning to curb my ideas because not all ideas pan out. Um, I still have the second draft to do. I do want to do a graphic novel. And the graphic novel I'm thinking about doing takes place in the same world as the um, the Poseidon universe is. The Underworld, the, the series I'm, I'm working on, the Nano and Rhyme one, it's called Underworld Bride. And that's a completely different universe compared to the Poseidon one. The Poseidon is more open world, sort of like Fallout. The Fallout universe where it's such an open world that anything can happen. You can tell any story at any time in the Fallout universe because the way the universe was created is more sandboxy. And Poseidon is more of a sandboxy universe. You might have your main cast there, but then you might have a side story off on the side about somebody that was mentioned in the book and that could be part of a graphic novel and then it ties right back in with the main cast. I thought about doing that and with me using World Anvil to help my world building, um... I mean, it can be a, re a reality, but at the moment, I have to kind of condense my thoughts and my, and my ideas. Like right now, I'm kind of writing them down in a notebook what I want to do, but I have to, excuse me, 
I have to wait. Like the Masaki book I was currently doing on Wattpad, that's on hold because of the second draft. Now I may come back to Masaki later on, but I'm but that's one of the stories that I could even though he's part of the cast, he's not a main cast member, he's a side cast member. I could put him atten uh potentially put him in a graph the graphic novel rather than you know, just put them part of the cast. I, mean, I I'm not sure. Everything's still a work in progress. Um, and with everything else, um, I'm still going to do the podcast. I'm trying to figure out my podcast schedule. I'm thinking about just doing one or two. Usually I do two podcasts a month, but I might have to scale it back to one podcast a month because the news of the world is the coronavirus, and that's all everybody's been talking about. Um... I might not have as many stories or many things to podcast about at this moment. Now, there are there are some things that are going on currently on YouTube right now with a certain creator. And I don't want to put my hat into it because it has nothing to do with me. I'm an author tuber slash booktuber. I'm not a drama tuber. I don't want to be part of that or give my opinion on that particular subject because it has nothing to do with me. And I have enough stuff on my plate without adding on to that BS. That's the first thing. The second thing, um, I'm still working on, you know, my spring of young adult. I will be releasing a book two video and I'm reading right now, which I didn't know wasn't a young adult book. I thought it was get YA, but it kind of stuck with it now. It's called, um, why can't I think of words? I feel like my brain's going blank and I think it's from me being in the house. It's creating Stockholm syndrome-esque feelings. Let me just pull up my, not my discord. I don't, I'm just, could ignore discord for a couple hours it's called it's not sassy mates let's just put that down here that's a different book series altogether um it's it's the newest book by sarah j mass which i don't really particularly um i didn't like her last book she did the, um the first book uh about the female assassin that series completely just turned me off completely i just i couldn't finish it but what is it oh um Crescent City by Sarah J. Mass is what I'm reading. Um, I'm going to do a book two book on that. Um, but that book is incredibly long. It's like 60 chapters long, which to be honest, I should have probably seen that coming because there is just a Sarah J. Mass book and Sarah J. Mass books are freaking long, like insanely long. A lot of her books, but she does a lot of world building too. I mean, the, her Crescent City book is better than her Thro Throne of Glass. That's what I read. Throne of Glass was not as interesting as Crescent City. I also have um, some books on here that was advertised by book by um, YouTube, such as Prince of Thorns, Runs of Future I already read, that was pretty good. Um, Gardens of the Moon, yeah, Assassin's Apprentice. Um, I have some books, I'm not sure now, The Queen of, not The Wiki King and, where's that book? The Cruel Prince series was really good, I enjoyed it, um, but Back to the spring slash summer of booktube YA books. I am I do have the list, and I also have books sitting on my Kindle that I can read and review um, if the books aren't out in the time frame I need it to. So I am I I got stuff in the fry pan, and I don't need to add stuff to the fry pan. So I have my Twitch streaming I do two times, two days a week on the weekends um, because I do work during the week and I don't want to, um, mess with the monotony of my job. So I'll leave a link in the description if you want to see it. Um, my schedule's only from 5 a.m., I mean 5 p.m. to 7 p.m. Eastern time because I live on the East Coast. Um, I do a two-hour streaming. Right now I'm doing Alien Isolation. Um, I have the Y, the, the summer, spring slash summer of YA books that I'm going to be reviewing. And I still have my second draft to write. So I had stuff in the pan already. The digital book, the digital graphic novel I want to do, I can hold off on that because I don't have, I don't have, excuse me, with the coronavirus and everything, I should not be blaming it on everything, but that seems like where everything is going right now. I don't have the breathing space to do what, um, to do a lot of these projects. So I'm learning, especially now that I'm working from home, to condense a lot of stuff condense it write it down maybe come to back to this project later when I have the space for it um and learn to do stuff in moderation so that's what I'm gonna leave this rambly rambly video with doing stuff in moderation 
we're in a quarantine and I thank everybody out there who is a mail carrier, a doctor, a nurse, um, an educator, um, people who are essential that are needed even during this crisis. I thank you for the stuff you're doing. The retail workers that are forced to go out here at the supermarket and get all and, and stock food and watch as these people overbuy. And at my store, they've stopped doing returns all completely because people overbought and they realize, you know what, I don't need all this stuff. And guess what? You can't you can't take it back. I I applaud these people for what they do. And if you're out there, please don't be a jerk to these people, especially the fast, you know, these people who work in healthcare, who are essential workers, who are out there in the middle of the virus, who are more likely to get infected. You know, the people who work elderly, people, my husband works in mental health, he has to go to a mental health facility every day. Leave these people alone. Please don't bully them. Don't, don't, don't mess with them. Let them do their jobs. And hopefully we'll all get out of this, this crisis, this pandemic. And I will chat with you guys again soon. Bye-bye.